Okay, we're gonna head inside and go cut a hole in that wall to see if there are babies behind it. This is the hole behind this tape. The customer has taped it up because there was some insulation that fell out and it was an open hole for them. So they taped it. I can feel that there is a hole there and I can also hear movement behind it right now. So we're just going to open up the tape first. Oh, it's a very tiny hole that's there so far. So you can see the plastic piece moving a little bit there. So there's some movement behind this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the drywall saw in. Oh, we hit something right there. It's very, very thin here. I'm listening to the mother. She'd be growling if she was here. You see, she's completely taken away all the backing of the drywall. You show me the piece again. Oh yeah, I see a tail. They're pretty big. Are they? Oh. Make them bigger then. Okay, make but if you want. Bigger. Go side to side. Stay above them. I know, they're below. They're not. And you're enough to get your hand in there. Oh, a lot bigger than what I was expecting. I was expecting. Okay, that's big enough for your hand. I know, I'm going down. Sorry, I need some room. Just for a second. You almost put them after they climb up the wall. I know, I can see them. Probably break that piece. So there they are, right in there. Looks like their eyes are closed. Oh, that one. Good. That one's not moving. You need to make that bigger. Or? No, it's perfect. There's that one moving. Very cool. Hi, buddy. Take, and them. Take the, your time then. Yeah. Them. So the mom wouldn't have known that the room was behind this. She was just chewing because she would have been lying here while she was feeding them. And it's such a small space. You can see the wall on the other side there. And the mom would have just been chewing away because they're habitual chewers and they have to keep their teeth short. So she would have just chewed on the drywall here, not knowing that there was a bedroom behind it. So we're gonna grab the babies. We're going to reach for a baby. Big guys. Wow. They're not going to go anywhere. Okay, no, they're just going to the left. Just want to make sure none were moving. Move this. So there's one. They are big. Their eyes are closed, though. That's very cool. Yeah, they're good size for this time of year. Yeah. So I think I saw three gray ones and one black one. Oh, he's gripping onto my glove. Let's touch this to my arm. Reach in for a second. Is it going to be gray or black? Come on, buddy. Black. Got a black baby. Wow. So cool. Look how long their tails are. So cool. Oh. Oh, don't cry. Not yet. Put number two. Yeah, they're being very quiet. If they were to start to you screech. Where then mom would come running and blocks away. His mom might not even be in here right now. She could be out, but this one's a bit smaller. Huh. It's a boy. What can you tell? <laughs> Hi, yeah, buddy. He's a boy. Their feet are so cool and so grippy. As soon as I touch them, they're gripping to my gloves. Get out of there. If it's in it's, way. it's okay. Shh. This is a baby squirrel in its nest. Just so cool. You don't usually get to see them on the inside. Hi, bud. <laughs> He's wanting to come out. So we'll grab him. He's kind of burying himself there. Come on. That's okay. 
There you go. I almost didn't get you. You're climbing with your eyes closed. So you can just see how, why they would be such good climbers when you look at their feet. Their back feet and the long fingers and the sharp nails. It doesn't take long for these guys once their eyes open. Uh, within a few weeks they're able to climb out onto the roof and then in about a month's time they'll be as agile as the mother on the trees. Okay, we'll put him in the bag. There we go. Just make sure we have them all. I can feel that there's no more babies. There's a perfect little spot for them. You can see the little space there. And so if the mom continued to chewing, to keep chewing, she would have eventually made the hole bigger and gotten into here by accident. But the customer caught it early and we were able to get them out. So we'll take the babies outside and let's see if mom will come. We're gonna put this piece of plywood over the hole so if the mom is still in there and she comes back to try to check where her babies were, she doesn't make her way inside the house. And then the customer will need some drywall repair afterwards. And the, the plywood's a bit warped, but it's okay because it is blocking the hole, it's tight. So there's no chance of the squirrel getting into the house. So now that we've got all the babies, we've closed the hole, we don't know where mom is because we didn't see her. I don't think I ever heard her because I was hearing the babies move around. We'll go up on the roof with the babies, place one up there, get them to make some noises. Hopefully they start chirping and crying out for her. And then we will see if the mom comes out or comes from outside. She might already be outside, hears them and comes running because they will come running from blocks away. So we'll have to watch for her while we have the babies up there, but hopefully she returns. Oh. So there's four of them. Can I take pictures? Yeah, of course. The so one's black and the rest are gray. So their eyes are closed still, but they're, oh they're pretty cute. <laughs> so they didn't know what was going on in there. They were just making some noise. Uh -huh. It would have been the mom that made that hole though, yeah, yeah. with her chewing. And I didn't see the mom in there right now. So we'll go up on the roof and try to get her to come grab a baby while we're up there. So they'll come right over Yeah, there. yeah. The squirrels will hear their, if they start chirping, they're not making the noise right now, but if they start crying out, she would hear it and come oh, running. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a really high pitch noise that they make. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can take more pictures if you want. Take as many as you want. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, at least they will be safe. <laughs> oh, yes. So even if the mom doesn't come back right now, we'll be putting them in a heated jug. So they'll be safe up there and she'll come back on her own time to get them. Oh, okay. And we would return tomorrow to check on them. Because oh. we always want to give the babies back to the mom, uh -huh. make sure that they're together. Yeah, that's good. And she would go crazy trying to find them as well. Yeah. So we make sure that they're reunited. We have our harness on, all our climbing gear, so that we're safe up here while we go to the edge and deal with the entry hole and the babies. So we'll just get set up and then I'll pull the babies out. So just grab the babies. I'll show you how well they can climb, how grip, how much they can grip on you. Maybe not this guy, <laughs> but we'll grab them out, grab all of them. None of them have cried yet. We haven't seen mom, but and they're just so cool at this age. They don't really know what's going on, but they are able to climb. They have their really long tails, which helps them with balance. Their feet are so grippy. As soon as your glove touches them, they're, they're stuck on you. They're ready to start moving around, but they need their eyes to open. They have all their fur coming in. Their claws are long. And they're kind of content. They're not crying for mom. And their eyes are closed because they won't open until 21 days. So they're about two weeks old, maybe approaching three, but they'll start to slit open and then their eyes will be open and they'll be running around. They typically would have just started moving around in their den. They wouldn't have been ready to go out yet, but eventually mom would have taken them out and taught them how to forage and jump from trees. 
which she still will do, but right now she'll be relocating them to an alternate den site and she'll have to pick them up and carry them just because they can't see. And then once their eyes open, they'll be learning how to be a squirrel with mom. These two are like cuddling in here. So I'll put one on the roof. We'll see if they'll cry out for mom. It's a really high pitched noise that what they make. It's okay. Okay, let's try to get mom to come. So the mother didn't come around while we were here, but that's okay because we have our jug to place the babies in. They'll be safe in here and wait for her return. We have all the babies in our bag. They've been waiting to go into the jug, cuddled together. So, yeah. So one by one, we're going to put them in this little jug. They're just so cool at this age. Place them in. Come on. And there's a little bit of nesting material in there so they have something to lie on. Here's number two. This guy's a lot smaller than his siblings. I'll put you in. Go, oh, buddy. Get your tail in. Do the black one. A lot of people comment on our YouTube that they've never seen a black squirrel before where they live, but they're very common here in Toronto and Canada. Place him in there. Oh, this is actually a tiny one too. Their little ear flapping in the wind. And we'll put them in the jug. So we'll set up our trail cam, be able to see mom come back. I think she'll come back this afternoon. It's noon right now, so she's probably just out foraging, getting food, and she would come back for them later. So we'll set up that camera and we'll be able to see what time she came back for them. If you look on the far right, you can see the squirrel licking the peanut butter on our one-way door. This is before the mother squirrel had come out, so she was actually inside while we were doing the job, just wasn't near her babies. Here she comes all the way out. She's sniffing around, notices our jug, a little bit skeptical, but then looks inside and sees her babies. And right now it appears that she was very focused on trying to get back in rather than relocating the babies. She knew the babies were in a safe space because she looked in, she knew they were all there, they're contained. So she spends a lot of her time on our footage trying to get back into her entry hole rather than immediately moving on. She's back on top of the door, just trying to see if she can get past our work, but she does not. And this footage actually continued on for clips and clips and clips. And even into the night and the next morning, she continuously was just searching and trying to figure out a way in. We unfortunately did not get the footage of her taking the babies away because of this. But when we returned the next day around 10 a.m., all the babies were relocated and mom wasn't in sight. So she eventually gave up trying to get back in took her babies and moved to an alternate den site.